Hey guys, uh, since I had all the things out already, uh, I thought I would do a little bit of a, a more in-depth or maybe a different approach to testing the Hall sensor on a classic Saab 900. Um, this time, we're going to start with the same basic tools, a, um, a regulated power supply and a digital multimeter. But what we're going to take out of the equation this time is the ignition control module. Uh, we're going to test only the Hall sensor itself, not in combination with the ignition control module. To do that, what we need to do is we need to apply a pull-up resistor uh, to this little test. And you can see that little guy right here. Um, I'll explain how that's wired in in a minute, but uh, this pull-up res pull resistor is nothing special. Uh, I'm using a 1200 ohm resistor, but you can really use anything between about 1000 ohms to 5000 ohms, maybe even a little bit higher. What we'll see by changing the value of that resistor is slightly different voltage, but for the purpose of testing the Hall sensor, we'll still know whether it works or not if you're anywhere within that range. So the two things that we're going to do this time, uh, just because uh, I happen to have access to it at the moment, is we're going to look at uh, a regular turbo style distributor, which you'll find on all 16 valve Saab 900 turbos, uh, the classic variety. You'll also find it on 86 and 87 non-turbos. But in 88, uh, Saab switched it up and they moved the Hall sensor uh, away from the distributor and onto the crank. People call those a crank position sensor, um, which makes everyone think that it's a different thing, but it's not. It's really exactly the same thing. So what I've got here is the oil pump housing from a 1990 or 91 uh, classic 900 non-turbo. And what we can see here, uh, the oil pump housing, the uh, front main seal, which as we all know is located on the back of the motor in the classic 900, and uh, another hall sensor. It's almost exactly the same thing as in the distributor. It's shaped a little bit differently, but it works exactly the same, sends exactly the signal, uh, exactly the same signal. It does everything the same. It's just mounted in a different place. Uh, on these cars, on the 88 plus non-turbos, the distributor is empty. There's no electronics in there at all. The only purpose this thing uh, serves is to get spark from the coil uh, to an individual spark plug. So we still have a rotor and we still have a distributor cap and it still spins around but there's no electronics in there. This thing is entirely mechanical. Um, the hall sensor is inside the oil pump housing. So one thing to call attention to here, uh, which is uh, just as a side note, is on these cars that have a crank mounted hall sensor, the aperture disc is located on the back of the crank pulley. Uh, this is the thing that drives the uh, V-belts and the aperture disc is bolted to the back of it. Uh, we've got two open areas and two closed areas, which is different than uh, the distributor mounted hall sensor, which has four open areas and four closed areas. The obvious reason for that is that the distributor moves at half the speed of the crank, so we need twice as many uh, sections in order to generate exactly the same signal. But the purpose, the function, uh, everything is really exactly the same. We have a hall sensor that's driven by 12 volts, and as the distributor spins or the crank spins, that the output voltage changes depending on whether the hall sensor's connection is broken or open by the aperture disc. So that guy again is the aperture disc. And on the non-turbo, the aperture disc is bolted to the back of the crank pulley. So uh, we're gonna test this uh, very similarly to how we did before with the ignition control module. I've got a regulated power supply and I've got a DC multimeter. Um, and again, the big difference here is that instead of the ignition control module, we're going to use a pull-up resistor and it's going to show us roughly the same thing. Um, the test is still almost the same. So to start this guy out, I'm going to grab the positive from my uh, regulated supply and I'm going to connect it to the positive lead of the hall sensor. Uh, this wiring right here is actually from an Audi, um, so it's a little bit different in color, but uh, the function is the same. On a Saab, the positive supply is either going to be green if it's a distributor or red if it's a crank, uh, crank pulley uh, mounted hall sensor. So uh, here we'll look at the distributor side first. So we connect our positive supply to what would normally be the green wire. And we're gonna connect our negative to what would normally be the black wire. In this case, uh, it's not black, but use your imagination. Uh, I'm then gonna grab the negative uh, probe from my multimeter connect that guy up to the negative lead. And then I'm going to grab the positive uh, from my multimeter and connect it to the signal return um, from the hall sensor. Uh, 
So that's all pretty straightforward. Um, just to recap the wire colors, if this was an actual Saab, the positive supply on the distributor is gonna be green, the signal return would be brown, and the ground would be black. So we're gonna fire up my um, power supply. I'm gonna turn on the multimeter to DC volts. And what we can see, just like before, when the signal uh, on the hall sensor is interrupted, I get high voltage. And when it's open, I get low voltage. Interrupted, high voltage, open, low voltage. So again, as the distributor spins, I get that alternating high and low voltage. It's really simple to see here, and it doesn't require uh, a, a great deal of effort, and it doesn't require much in the way of special tools. If you don't have a regulated power supply, um, you could do this with a battery. Let's see if I can get a slightly different angle so we can actually see what's going on here. So we spin it a little bit, we get high voltage. Spin a little farther, we get low voltage. high voltage and low voltage. So that shows me that my hall sensor is working. I've got 12 volts coming in and varying voltage coming out depending on the position of the aperture disc as it relates to the hall sensor. So let's look at how this works uh, with a crank position sensor. I'm gonna turn my power supply off just for safety. So the crank position sensor, again, works just about exactly the same. Just to make this easy. I'm going to go ahead and remove the aperture disc. Oops. This is going to be a little bit clumsy because as it turns out, uh, hall sensors are highly magnetic. That's how they work, but we'll still get the idea. So you can see this guy comes off pretty easily. Uh, it's a little fragile. I mean, it's made of steel, but you don't want anything bad to happen to it. If the edges were to get damaged, you could mess up your timing. Um, so I'm gonna just go ahead and set this guy right like that. So it's blocking my hall sensor. So I'm gonna go ahead and grab my positive lead from the regulated power supply, and I'm gonna connect it to the positive supply on the crank mounted hall sensor. On these guys, the uh, positive supply is going to be red. Then I'm going to grab the ground from my regulated power supply and connect it to the ground of the crank mounted hall sensor, uh, which is black. I'm going to go ahead and take the uh, negative lead from my multimeter and uh, connect it to black wire as well. And I'll take the positive lead from my multimeter and connect it to the signal return uh, of the crank mounted hall sensor. And it's green on these guys. You'll notice this is actual sob wiring. So red is positive, green is signal, black is ground. And uh, very similarly, I'm gonna go ahead and fire up my uh, regulated power supply. And what I can see, I had positioned the aperture disc over here, blocking the hall sensor. Uh, so I have high voltage, and if I remove it, simulating the open area, I get low voltage. So this works exactly the same as the distributor mounted hall sensor. Uh, when it's blocked, I get high voltage, and when it's unblocked, I get low voltage. So this is uh, real quite, quite straightforward. Uh, crank spins around, I get alternating high and low voltage, and that lets the ignition system know that the engine is spinning. Um, so this, uh, I hope, answers some questions about how this system works. Uh, I think the takeaway is, is that to test a hall sensor, the only thing you need is uh, a multimeter, 12 volts, and a 100, or sorry, pardon me, a 1,000 ohm, or maybe up to a 10,000 ohm resistor, a um, couple alligator clips, and you are good to go. The other thing to bear in mind, and this is something I'll just toss in, a lot of folks already know this, but uh, if you happen to have a crank mounted hall sensor uh, on a later non-turbo classic 900 and it has failed or otherwise doesn't work, uh, you can actually swap in a distributor from uh, an earlier non-turbo or even uh, a later turbo car uh, 
because they work exactly the same. You just need to match up the wiring. Uh, it's a quick fix um, for sensors that are getting old or difficult to service. I'm sure some of you that may be watching this have come to realize that parts for these crank mounted hall sensors are extremely hard to find, um, especially if there's any physical damage. Uh, so a uh, quick summary, just uh, in case you happen to be in that boat, uh, the thing to remember uh, on the um, distributor mounted hall sensor is that the positive supply on these guys is the green wire, the signal return is the brown wire, and the ground is the black wire. And then on the crank mounted sensors, the positive supply is the red wire, the signal return is the green wire, and the ground is the black wire. So if you're mishmashing parts together, uh, those are the things to know. Um, and I think that's about it. That's uh, all I wanted to cover today. And I hope this has uh, given some folks some good information in terms of troubleshooting hall sensors. Uh, this actually works on most cars. Uh, anything that uses Bosch injection probably uses a hall sensor, at least from the 80s. Um, thanks a lot and uh, have a good one.